my teaching today will cover how to become the most powerful man in the world. And I don't mean through worldly means. The best power you will ever get. If you want the secret power, the number one power, it is God Almighty himself. Yeah. That is KO number one power. A lot of people want to trade their own power of the world for the power. Uh, they, want, they want to give up the power of God and accept the power of the world. That is sad. <clears throat> if you're going to get the power of the world, you only get a fraction of the world. But God gives you more than the world. Didn't you know that? Yeah. As your inheritance? All right. All right, I'm going to teach you how to get this. So this will be an incredible blessing to you. The first power is through, now listen to this, everyone has an opportunity. Can I repeat that again? Everyone has an opportunity to receive this power from God. But what's really sad is that people discard and despise the opportunity to receive this power. So this is very important for you. The first one, you ready, is suffering. You need to suffer so that you can become one of the most powerful people in the world. If God used our church in any way for power, there is no denying to the fact, I can proudly say, that one of the things was, see that? Why do you despise suffering then? Why do you run away from suffering? See, it should be embraced. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. So notice right here that Paul, he begged God to take away the suffering from him, right? But look at verse 9, what God did. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the what? Power of Christ may rest upon me. You want the power of God? Then what you need is you need suffering. And I mean need. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, that is so hard to say amen to. But it is absolutely essential that you say amen and you embrace this. It's suffering. It's suffering. We're also going to turn to the book of Luke, please. Open your Bibles to the book of Luke. And then Galatians chapter 5 as well. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5 as well. You know what other thing you need? You need the filling power of the Spirit. You need the filling of the Spirit. That is an essential ingredient that you must, and I mean must, you must have to get a lot of answers to prayer, to get a lot of power. So we're going to look at Luke chapter 4, and then we're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. Luke 4 and Galatians chapter 5. How did they become the greatest preachers who ever lived? This, these Great Awakening Revival preachers. Finney, Spurgeon, Wesley, Whitfield, etc., etc. Billy Sunday. You know why? They all prayed for the filling power of the Spirit. Moody was a good preacher, but he even said this. He didn't realize the true power of God until he requested the filling power of the Spirit. So he started praying about it. This is something else. Now look at Galatians 5, and then we're also going to look at Luke chapter 4. Didn't you know your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how he became powerful was because through the filling power of the Spirit as well? you got to realize that's the third member of the Trinity right there. So that's an essential ingredient to receive power. I mean, if Jesus had it, shouldn't you even more? <laughs> now look at Luke chapter 4. Verse 1, and Jesus being what? Full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That's why in verse 2, because of that filling power of the Spirit, he was able to conquer that wicked one. That wicked one. Now look at uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Notice right here there is importunity in prayer. You'll notice right here that in verse uh, 3, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God 
uh, avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. So you'll notice right here that the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave a parable that if a person kept begging and begging and requesting and requesting, even an unsaved man will listen. And that's what you need with prayer with God. What you need to do is you need to keep praying and praying for the filling power of the Spirit. And by consistent prayer of the power of the Spirit, you know what God's going to do? What God's going to do is that he's going to finally hear you out and then answer it. If you, have this, if you want the filling Spirit power of God, enough spiritual power to have the wisdom, the right words to say, to win the soul effectively, to have some kind of aura and magnet around you where people will listen and that prayers will be answered mightily, miracles happening right in front of your face. You know how you do that? You need the filling power of the Spirit and you need to pray often. You need to pray quite often for that. All right, another thing right here is that what you're going to find out is in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. I will read it quickly. If he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, Amen. how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See that? By constant prayer, the Holy Spirit feels you. Your hand is at Galatians 5. And look at right here. The next thing right here is that now to get this filling power of the Spirit, there's something blocking it. And that's the works of the flesh. So if you want the power of God, you need a lot of rejection, renouncing, sacrificing the things of the flesh. When you have a heart that will still yield into sin, have that stubbornness and pride and the weakness of falling into the works of your flesh, that's the reason why God's power cannot fall upon you. Your Christian life does not seem powerful. You keep living a life of defeat and you don't get blessing because there is some kind of work of the flesh and that interferes with the function of the Holy Spirit of God working in you. So that's why it's very good that you have complete sacrifice. Completely sacrificing fully of self. Amen. When self is renounced on the altar, because the work of the flesh is this, it's all about you. When self is completely emptied, and when you live a life ministering to people, thinking about people, what other people think, and how God would respond, and how God would think, and nothing of yourself, then what happens is then the Lord starts to put more power in your life. But because you have this arrogant, prideful attitude, and onlineers have this big problem who want to start their own ministry online, they have this arrogant, prideful attitude problem, their own little world, that's why God's power cannot fall upon them. And they have to rely on the works of the flesh to gain their power, to restore their power. If God took out our YouTube channel, we'll do just fine, Amen. man. If God closed down this building, we'll do just fine. If all of you walk out of this church, hey, I'll do just fine. Amen. It's just Jesus and me. That's all Jesus needs, man. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, see that? The fruit comes out. But in order to that, for that to come out, look at verse 24. And they that are Christ, see, you want to be fully Christ, have what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. It is good that you quit your, the music that you're listening to, the stuff that you're watching, both in television and online, and then the stuff that you have in your house and everything about self, me, 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 that's completely gone. Oh, I'm going to be like an Amish person and Mennonite. One, you're exaggerating. Don't be overdramatic. Two, what do you mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pity. It's, it's a lot of sacrifice. It's so hard to do. I would rather have all of God and zero of the world rather than just uh, half and half with the world and Jesus Christ. I'd rather have that. There is also power in prayer. Now, I'm going to wrap this up right here. So, 1 John 1, 7 and 9. And then Revelation chapter 12. And then we're going to go to the power of prayer right here. This is found at the book of John. But actually, I will do it injustice if I write the book of John. So I'm just going to write any verse on prayer. First of all, concerning this one right here, the other power is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important to plead the blood of Jesus. Confession is so important because that is power. Pleading the blood of Jesus over a certain sin will make the wicked one flee and run away. 
What makes all hell tremble is that blood of Jesus spilled all over you. Because that blood is all over your soul, Satan would not even dare touch that soul and drag it to hell for all eternity. There were Satanists who confessed and gave testimonies about the blood of Jesus as a thing that freed them from their addictions, from Satanism, and from witchcraft. Not only the blood of Jesus, but it's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look up any verse in the Bible where they had power over devils. They use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why? Because it's at that name every knee will bow. It's at that name that if you take it in vain, you get stoned to death at the Old Testament. It's that name that's the only way to heaven. By no other means can you be saved. It's that name that saved your very soul from hell. It's that name where you get answers to prayer. So it's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer is also the last power that you need. So you need to live a life of prayer. If you want some victory over a sin, over a problem in your life, you need to pray about it. Why did Daniel have such power that lions didn't even eat him? Because he never compromised in prayer. Not even one time. He did it three times a day. That's the reason why. There is so much power in prayer. Use the power of prayer. Always use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over an instant. Say, over an instance of problem in the life, you say that you rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over a certain problem in your life. Lord God, I plead the blood over that wicked thing in my household, in this city, in our church, in my life. Go through suffering like a soldier of Jesus Christ so that he can build up more power within you. Plead the, fill, the Holy Spirit to fill within every inch of your body with his power and then renounce all of self completely. And when self is denied on the altar and there's nothing but God there that you see. If, all, if what you see is Gene Kim, I did not do the job. If I lift up my hands like this and I'm crucified, all you better see is Jesus Christ. And if all you see is Jesus Christ, that's why you're going to see the power of God in the preaching, in the teaching, in whatever I do. And it will be in your life. 